Your crypto bags are going to zero. A recession is on its way. You'll be lucky to get a job at McDonald's. If you don't get a job at McDonald's, you'll be drafted into the military. If you're drafted into the military, you'll be fighting a war in the Middle East. That is the bit of the, the news that I'm seeing, at least, on crypto Twitter and on YouTube. But let's actually dive into some crypto news with a little bit of Solana news, more crypto news today. It's the 5th of August. Firstly, we're at CoinGecko. I'm going to show you that things are going down. And of course, not a financial advisor. I don't know if they're going to go down further, but I also have 10,000 US dollars and I'm deploying it. And I'll show you how I'm deploying it later in this video. So it's going to be a little bit of a long one. If you need to watch it on 1.5x speed. Bitcoin down considerably. If you had Sunday off, then you would have woken up and just been like, what? Ethereum down crazily. Like the last time was at this price was February. And Solana's down pretty insane as well. $112. Really, really crazy. Now, I could zoom out and show you what it looked like in COVID. But first, I want to give you a little bit more news. Why is this potentially happening? There's likely going to be like a thousand different causes, thousand variables, because it's not as simple as just one thing versus another thing. But specifically with crypto, we'll cover that. Anyway, yen and US dollars. Bank of Japan has gone and increased interest rates and the yen is actually strengthening. Now, if it's strengthening like this, it could be a whole lot of things to do, you know, with this going up. I don't think the yen is stronger in any way than the US dollar, but maybe just the political uncertainty in the US is very strong. On top of that, you've also got the Middle Eastern war escalation. But let's go over actually what's happening with yen. So the Japanese yen hasn't been doing very well for, for years, as well as the fact that the stock markets don't actually do well either. They had a major kind of roar, maybe the 80s or 90s, maybe a little bit later, but then they haven't actually been anything like the NASDAQ or emerging markets. So, you know, they also have, Japan has like an aging population, a low birth rate. It's not a country of proper expansion. It was in the past, but it isn't really now. Now, you could borrow yen at 0%, put into USD, earn 5 or crypto, or equities, and earn a lot more. The issue is, when the yen goes up in value, your debt is in yen. So you have, for many, many months or years, known that the yen gets weaker compared to the US dollar, and now all of a sudden, let's say it goes up 20%, not sure what it actually did, but let's say it goes up 20%, you borrowed 1 million, you're earning 10%, you're earning 100,000 a year, but your repayment debt is 200,000 plus maybe there's a small interest there. So like 215,000 because your dollar or your currency has just gone and got stronger. But let me give you a little bit more of a TLDR from Jason Pizzino, in real life friend from Gold Coast, Australia. And this is a live stream or a video that went for one and a half hours. So I've got a TLDR written over here. So I'm going to read it off this screen. So I won't be looking at the camera, sorry, but I'm going to make it as fast as possible. The first thing relates to the 18.6 year property cycle, which I've covered before, but the 18.6 year property cycle, it's known as the like the winner's curse period right now. I've got a video on it and it's probably best if I actually show you visually what it looks like. It looks like this. This follows real estate and then other markets basically follow real estate. So we're at this point where 2025, 2026, more likely to be like end of 25, 26, could be a little bit later, a little bit earlier, probably not going to be now, like definitely not going to be now, is the peak. So right now we're here. Now there's a couple of things that happen. We do get a mid-cycle slowdown. This was COVID and it's a normally a sizable dip. And then we can have a little bit of volatility. Of course, we can always have, you know, peaks and corrections just based on political news. But this is when it goes crazy. And this part is just blow up crazy. For some sort of context, previously, um, in the previous cycle, 2007, what would happen with real estate is something that was worth like 500,000 would be worth, would be suddenly worth a million dollars. People would buy it off the plan without ever seeing it. And so many different companies just went bankrupt. And then you go and buy something that you think you can go and rent out for like, I don't know, $2,000 a week, or I'm not sure what people thought. And then by the time the crash hit, that million, million dollar property was worth $400,000. So this is that. So essentially, we're not actually, we're not at the peak. So if we think everything's going to zero now, that would include stocks, crypto, real estate, everything, then this is when we go into this recession type, when people start to lose their jobs. But we're actually two years early. So one thing that I want to do with this channel is make sure that we do our best to upskill in many different skills that are going to provide value in the world 
and also make a decent bag from here to here. That's essentially the goal. Now, let's have a look at this again. Okay, so when it comes to Bitcoin, there will be significant corrections. That's just along the way, that's just how it is. It's very normal, easy to know. Jason's overall view hasn't changed. The broader macro trend is still upward. Corrections are a normal part of the process. Some people claim that the market downturn signifies the end, but history shows that these claims frequently prove premature. For example, the wall of worry concept illustrates that during a long-term bull market lasting 10 to 15 years, occasional market sell-offs are in inevitable. Each time analysts predict the end, but they're often wrong as they tend to be only right twice a day like a broken clock. So the other thing is you're going to find someone on the timeline that's going to say, I've been telling you, I've been telling you, I've been telling you for years. You can't tell someone for years, right? We can have a, a, a kind of what I think Solana will hit at the peak of the cycle kind of vibe with that cycle, you know, being less than two years. We can't say for 10 years, it's eventually going to cra crash after it's gone up 80% and then crashes. That's just silly. Then chats about the lows of 20, March 2020, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, actually, I'll show you just now. We'll go to Bitcoin, just it's going to be easier, max. And we'll just kind of, we'll just use this because it's just going to be faster. Pull this here. By the way, there's a little bit of a run-up in 2019. That, was a, that wasn't like a, some people think that run-up in 2019 is what we're experiencing now. I'm not of that opinion. So this is what was happening in 2020. COVID was announced. There started to be some sort of uh, closures of borders and stuff around this time. And we're still like trending away. And then, bam, we just jumped down to like lower than that. I think it went down to like 3,000 something. And even exchanges stopped liquidating people just because the liquidation engines couldn't actually work. I believe if BitMEX didn't turn those off, it would have literally, it would have gone to zero. It would have been absolutely insane. If you leverage it down, you made a lot. ETH went down to like $87 or something. Back to this. So since the lows of March 2020 and even earlier, the bull market has continued. This applies to Bitcoin stocks and real estate, while specific markets like inner city Melbourne, city in Australia, unit market, might be struggling, national statistics show overall growth. So despite the current volatility and the winner's curse phase, the long-term upward trend remains intact. Regarding the recession point, people say this all the time. There are analysts, analysts on YouTube that say this. One reason why they say it is because ultimately, the more clicks you get, which I need to work on, the more views you get, you know, the bigger your brand actually gets. And if you go with dark, gloomy stuff, oh, it's all going terrible, like, this is your last chance, you know, start to learn how to flip burgers. If you go with that, it elicits a strong em emotional reaction and that leads you to basically watch the video. So that's what you see, in my opinion, when we're having a look at all the stuff talking about recession. I do not believe a recession is coming. I do believe currently the US is, of course, in trouble. Politically, they're in trouble. Their acting president can't talk on camera. They're... Well, their, their president can't talk on camera. Their vice president, she's gaining popularity. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff on social media showing she's a bit kind of crazy. And then you've got Trump. Some people love him or they hate him. There's no in-between. Oh, he's okay. It's like love or hate. So this is what this looks like. We still have, we still have time for it to go up. That's my opinion. Let's go through a little bit more uh, theses from people that, you know, I might ultimately disagree with, but I'll show you anyway. Trader Cos is a good trader. He did put on a long. I put on a long myself a few days ago. It's possibly going to be liquidated. I may add a little bit more to it though. But one thing is maybe what we're in, what I just mentioned, is actually not, um, it's not this previous cycle that we just experienced. It's actually 2019. So maybe it's more of a, an early 2019 cycle. And if we kind of go out to max, we, you can't really see it too much, but you can see we hit this low around 3000, then we come up and there's this 2019 pump and then we come back down again. That's essentially uh, the point he's making. And this is per Jared, who's the guy, the founder behind Golf and App, which I really like. Check out that video, by the way. I don't believe this is the case, but it's always, you know, worth considering that if it all ended today, would you be destroyed? And if you would be, then you've leveraged up too hard. Now, same pump says that we could see an emergency rate cut Wednesday or Thursday in the US maximum if it nukes nonstop from here in order to prop up the markets and hopefully 4850k by then for a big bounce. And DGNs are asking St. Pump if it's time to buy. The spot is better than yesterday's, that's for sure. Would expect at least a bounce after the violence of these liquidations. But the big question mark is trade fire markets, however, Japan stocks getting annihilated again, good chance for Black Monday into the US Open. Does crypto bounce or do algos sell aggressively at the open? Right now, I think it's too early to jump him. 
happy with covering shorts and watching it burn for the time being. So if you if you are a good trader, you can short, but I'm not. Remember, this is potentially our last chance to load up. Just keep that in mind. COVID crash, insane. It wasn't even as big as the COVID, COVID crash. And after this, straight up. Now, Raul Paul is, you know, one of the goats when it comes to macroeconomics. And he's talking about the banana zone. So like up it goes. Slipping on the dollar and yen, it won't be fatal, but we're going to have some bruises. Remember, we get 35% drawdown several times in the bull market and the occasional 50%. The thing that fixes this is liquidity. When more people come into the markets, we have the liquidity. And we don't have the liquidity right now because jump is essentially exiting. We'll cover that in a second. So that he also says this big sloppy range in the majors is really due to massive supply changing hands from last cycle and longer ago. Problems. FTX estate, Mt. Gox, Germany, GPTC, and now jump. Plus new project unlocks and tokens, it shall pass and all the major overhang will soon be digested. So with jump, you may not have heard, but they are selling a lot. We'll go over that, as I said, in just a second. ETH literally nuked 17% in four minutes. So you just have to be uh, very mindful. Like, you know, if you want to go into spot or dollar cost averaging, like what I'm doing, fine. But if you think you can time it along, it could be brutal. Or if you put on a short hair and then it bounces up, then you start to be liquidated again. Mertz advice is this. Sol is not naturally going down. It's being pushed down via whales, playing spoofy sell orders on exchanges to make noobs and risk managers sell to buy back lower. They're stealing your bags and will make you buy back at a higher price. I agree with this. This is a whale technique. You may as well push things down, push it down to the point where you've accumulated enough and then long it. And then you make hundreds of millions of dollars. Retail suffers because they were too ignorant to know what was happening. Now, Roll asked this question, does anyone have any further info on the rumor that jump trading has been liquidating their crypto portfolios? We can't see anything concrete, but we can see some stuff on chain. Jump trading is selling a massive amount of ETH, hundreds of millions of dollars since July 24th, and they still have like 100 million or thereabouts. And this is why it's just been falling and falling. Now, I don't know if they're going to take some of that and put it into US dollars and go and bid up the price of Seoul. Maybe. I don't know if they're going to be selling any of their Seoul positions. Maybe they're selling some random altcoins. Can't really see everything there, but essentially a major market maker is selling, selling, selling. So this is a whale selling. The other thing to note is apparently they're under investigation in some way. Maybe that's why they're selling. That just seems a little bit strange. But either way, this has been deliberately pushed down. Now, if you go and use Ethereum, just note, sometimes it can be insanely expensive. Like as an example, a hot bridge, $600 in gas, just absolutely insane. This is why I'm still, you know, always thinking Solana is going to do well. It just works. That's the end of this fuddy news. Let's now move on to some actual opportunities in the markets. Remember with the Patreon NFT, if you didn't win, you can go and do this Coinvise thing, uh, pro campaign until August 16th. Maybe you win one of these. Maybe that helps your bags. Go here, connect, do some things. Haven't done it yet. I will do it. Jupiter News, the vote has passed. It was incorrect in the crypto calendar that we maintain. However, I think I said Monday that by mistake. So I didn't actually do all my votes because I thought I had until Monday, which was my silliness. Either way, of course, 95% voting in favor of the supply reduction. So this, this will be burnt. The 30% will be burnt over time. And it's not going to factor into price, really, in my opinion. As Jupiter ships more and more stuff and as Solana gets stronger, then the price, I think, will go well. Basically, 3 billion jupe worth over $2.37 billion, probably now $2 billion, will be burned over a six-month period. If you start to see some FUD on Jupiter Perps, have a read of this. Basically, it's, it's competitively priced. It's a little bit more expensive than Binance, but you can get in and get out easy. And I think this Perps Dex will grow exceptionally, which is why I'm still very bullish on JLP. One thing to note when you're using the jupe swap, it defaults to dynamic. I don't really like that. Because there are some issues, some people are being kind of screwed. And this is why I, th I thought it was going to be good. And maybe it will be good. But it's normally set like this, a 3% dynamic. So sometimes you go and do a quote, like I want to change $10,000 into Seoul. Oh, that's not dollars. $10,000 into Seoul. And sometimes you get a good quote. And then other times you don't. So they're still working on the dynamic. For now, I would just go with like fixed and whatever you have to do. If you want to ape in super fast, then fine use dynamic, but just they're still working things out. This is very important, but make sure you've got enough capital in Camino or whatever you're using so you don't get liquidated unless you're happy to be liquidated. So Camino Finance has a very good liquidation engine. It's more low risk. We can click 
and visit risk.comino.finance. We can see, of course, deposits and borrows and things are falling because things are falling, but it's still doing uh, exceptionally well. But please just go and make sure that things look safe over there for you. A little bit of an actionable for you. If you suddenly became poor, we all became poorer, most likely. The Eclipse Discord now has a broke role, limited time only until prices go up, back up. So Eclipse is Solana on Ethereum. It's a, an SVM layer two over on Ethereum. I haven't played around with it or anything like that, but you can go and join and go and get the poor role. Maybe that will be worth something in the future. Some bonk news. The dog loves games and roasting marshmallows by the fire. So I don't know about this metaverse, but they've partnered over here. This is on BNB, or at least it's invested by Binance Labs. Still need to check it out, but just put it on your radar. I'm at the point now where I don't think there's any point in holding whiff. That's my opinion. You can hold a small bag, you can hold a massive bag, but I think Bonk will outperform. The community takeover on Whiff, I don't think it's done fantastically well. I think Bonk is going to lead and get more attention. Jussie has a tier list for upcoming airdrops. Jupe, Meteora, Bonk, Switchboard, and so on and so on and so on. Have a look at these and see what you think has potential and go and work on these. You're not necessarily trying to farm them, just go and see what you think could work really well. I don't agree with everything here. I don't know what everything is here as an example. I don't think send is going to be worth it. I know they're trying to do a lot of things to improve how it works. I just don't know how they're going to really earn revenue and therefore be able to protect their token price. But I definitely agree with these ones. And also if you are into NFTs, probably a good time now to go and use Magic Eden and get those diamonds. Plenty of FUD on diamonds. And I think the other kind of team that would want to prove the FUD is wrong. Now we have to stay safe and we have to stay alive until crypto markets kind of improve. But one thing that I will be covering is how to mine ore. So I've been creating a tutorial. I don't know if I can do this today. Hopefully I can, or maybe I do it tomorrow and we're slightly late. But all mining, I think has, it's worth the risk. We might not make a single thing, but if half of the viewers here go and start this, we learn a new skill, that's always good. And maybe all becomes worth something. Maybe this starts to take over the timeline as opposed to the latest pump and dump meme coin, which people really do need to stay away from. This is essentially Bitcoin on Solana. That's at least one narrative. And I think this could do really, really well. It's got a decent number of followers, plenty of engagement. And as soon as people start to get involved, because it's actually V1 was paused, V2 is coming out, as you can see at midnight, then stuff can get a little bit crazy. Now, if you do own some ore, you have to go and migrate it. I'll buy a little bit and show that in a tutorial as well. But ultimately, I want to actually set up something so this can actually mine. That's my major goal. I will be keen if you dive in as well. Now, I've got a new wallet address, which we pasted below. I seeded it with $10,000 just like last night or 2 a.m. this morning, something like that. And I'm going to show you, you can track this. And I'm going to do as many things as I can with this wallet just to try and grow this decently, but not in any degen way. You can follow it. You can do whatever you like. It's not going to be a kind of a rocket ship meme coin kind of play, but it should gain value. That's what my goal is. Now, I went and bought a lot of soul last night. Just down a little bit. My first thing, of course, is when you've got soul, go and stake it. Stake it with validate.com. So we're going to do validate.com and I'll do the majority, but I'll keep a little bit just for gas. And I'll just keep on staking. Every time I get a little bit more, I'll just go and stake, confirm that stake. The other thing that I'm doing is I've gone to Meteora and I've put some USDC into a soul and USDC pool. I, at least I think I did. Maybe that transaction did not go through. Let's have a quick look here. Okay, looks like that didn't go through. So now I can show you. Now, if you want to try and buy at a particular range, so we can turn off autofill and let's say I've got $500 that I'm happy to buy from here and lower. I can go and set it from say like 120 and we can go all the way down to like 50, not quite, maybe 65, 65, 65, still not that, 70. No, you know what we can, we can go 65 and we'll go 115, 113. Okay, so here we have this number of bins and we can buy a little bit like this. We can also go and set it so that we're buying more as it gets lower and lower or whatever strategy we want. I'm happy with a spot buy because at least at this stage, I'm also gonna have the soul, I'm gonna be earning something as well. So I'm going to add liquidity here. Hopefully this goes through. And if the price rockets up, then the USDC just sits there. We don't earn any interest on it, but it just sits there. We can withdraw it and then we can rearrange our range. So currently I'm not in range. 
I will be if we drop down a little bit lower. I could, of course, put it at 115. That would probably be a little bit smarter. But we will be buying and selling Sol at this range. And then this is earning like 1% in fees a day. It'll go up, it'll go down, probably down over the long run. But right now, it's earning some decent fees. The other thing that I'm doing is I went and took some USDC and I swapped it straight for Sol. However, more so limit orders. The limit orders were not going through very well at like 2 a.m. But I would like to go and set some limit orders lower. So something like this is always an option. Like $100, $100, buy at $100, you'd get one Sol. That would be a nice 15% discount. Prove that transaction. Remember, if it doesn't go through, you may want to go and change your RPC endpoints and just change your priority fee over here. You can even set it at crazy levels that you don't think it's actually going to go to. But if there was some crazy silly spike on chain, which happens, doesn't happen very often, but if there was, this could be filled. And you can go and get 10 sol, and all of a sudden, it's back up at $60. I think it's worth having these silly things. Even if, you know, you don't think it's actually going to hit, you can put them on dupe and also on phoenix. Phoenix.trade is a good idea just to have a little bit, just in case something silly does actually happen. It has happened in the past. That's why I bring it up. But more accurately, I'm probably going to go with maybe another $100 at, say, uh, 90 in case we get down there, another $100 at 80 and so on. You can do this with USDC into Bonk or whatever it is that you want to do. The other tool that I'm using is DCA. We can't time the bottom, but I've gone and set up some DCAs here. So this is a little bit of ETH, not bullish on ETH, but, you know, I'll get a little bit of exposure, some JLP, a little bit more Bonk, and some USDC into some Sol. So how we do this is we go $200 maybe a little bit more, $500. And then we want to buy some soul and then we choose how regularly. So maybe every one hour and then we can put in a number of orders. So this will be five USDC every hour. Maybe we want to do it every three hours. So this would take something like a week or so to go through, something like that. Every five hours, four hours, whatever. Our smallest amount that we can do is like $3, I think. It has to be at least $3. So we could do like $150 and $3.33. This is minor, we're only accumulating like $20 a day, but we can still use this feature in order to go over the next month and see what happens. At least that's a tool you may want to use. I'm using it personally. And then you can use value average as well, but I don't like this as much as DCA and limit. Keep in mind with limit and DCA, there's a 0.1% fee. You can also use limit orders with your Soulflare wallet. There's the 0.1% fee for Jupiter and also a 0.8% fee for Soulflare for the convenience of using your mobile phone. Let's move on to the action boards. It's been a longer video. Remember, claim your dupes active staking rewards by tomorrow, 1 p.m. UTC. Take part in Infinix's path to patron. Very well worth it. Get the broke roll in Eclipse's Discord. DCA some soul or bonk at these levels. Not financial advice. Maybe some JLP as well. Big fan of that. Please check on your loans and liquidations in Camino. If you need to beef them up, beef them up. You don't want to be liquidated unless you're happy to do so. And stop watching the charts and just learn some skills. Learn some skills on how to do something in crypto or learn another skill. If Unless you're actively trading, don't just worry about them going down. Just stay safe. It's all about surviving. Personally, I do not want to sell or get scared. I'm not scared. I'm not selling. And I don't want to go and sell to the whales that are happy to buy. Airdrop actionables. Sign up to Cube Exchange. Use my referral. Stake some bonk with bonkrewards.com. Check out Jussie's uh, airdrop guide. All mining resumes. August 6th. It says 11 a.m. UTC. I'm not sure if it's 11 a.m. or if it's midnight. Either way. It'll be uh, actually resuming soon. And stake your Camino if you have Camino. And if you're using Camino Finance, you get more points. That's all for today. Ask your questions below and I may jump on a live stream and start to go through them. Catch you tomorrow.